Hey there, got an unboxing video for you today. This time, this box came all the way from Calgary, Canada, to my house here in the United States. And in it has, hopefully, two copies of what I think could be the cover of the year. Stay tuned. All right, let's get to it. Uh, this shipment is from comictraders.ca. I think they also go by pullbox.ca. And a lot of times when I'm searching for books, um, sometimes I look to the great, uh, the great north uh, to find some variants and other things. And I've ordered from comic traders in the past and had uh, uh, good luck with them. But uh, let's get through this shipment here. This is a box that I ordered uh, maybe two, three weeks ago. And uh, this is how the box arrived uh, through Canada Post. It looks like it arrived with, you know, no impact damage whatsoever. So that's good. And let me see how I want to get in here. Get through the bottom. And let's get the side open as well. All right. See if that does the trick. Uh, get the top as well. So it looks like it's some sort of uh, like a folder style. One of these times, I am literally going to slice my hand, and I'm going to catch it on video, and then I'm going to replay it to you in slow motion over and over and over while I bleed out. Okay. So we've got this open. Get rid of the packing slip. All right. Got some nice, uh, nice combination of bubble wrap. And a few packing peanuts in here for good measure. Looks like it's either taped down. The bubble wrap was taped to the side of the box there. Let's get that off. Okay. Let's get rid of the box. Oh, I, packing peanuts went everywhere. All right. So a little bit of... Uh, Looks to be some sort of painter's tape, real easy to open up. Hopefully we don't need those scissors anymore. Love the bubble wrap. That's great, fantastic. More easy to pull up tape. So this, so far so good. This is uh, what you wanna see when books are sent to you. Okay, here they are. I love it, the books are not taped down to the bubble wrap either. They're just laying in there all nice and neat. So let's go through these. Trying to see what order. This is great bubble wrap. I will hoard this and we'll put it out in uh, future shipments. Okay. So let me zoom in a little bit and let's take a look at these one at a time. Right, let's take a look. First one is Strange Academy 6. This is the David Nakayama variant featuring the Scarlet Witch. And I'm a big uh, David Nakayama fan. I love his covers. I think you've seen me open some other covers of his in the past um, uh, with the, I think it was the Rogue variant. But this one uh, was one that I passed up on when it first came out and noticed that comic traders still had it in stock and uh, went ahead and picked this up. I believe this came out in late 2020, um, but really a gorgeous cover. It was coming out around the time of WandaVision, so I think people were, were grabbing and picking it up, but uh, comic traders happened to have an extra issue um, still in stock, so I picked it up. Yeah, speaking of, I think this is my second copy, uh, but this, I believe, uh, is the virgin version of X-Men number one with one of my favorite X-Men, Rogue. Um, the one that I unboxed recently, I think, had the trade dress on it. So this is the virgin uh, uh, of X-Men number one. Great cover. And more Rogue goodness. Again, Nakayama, 
This is kind of the bookend. This is X-Men 21, the Hellfire Gala uh, cover here. And this also is a, a Virgin store exclusive. So I'm a big Rogue fan. My last unboxing with the original art was of, of Rogue, 90s style Rogue. So this all kind of fits in nicely. Now, um, the next couple of books, they are the same, except one is a uh, is the, the Virgin cover. And the other one is the trade. I'll do the trade first. And this is Black Cat number nine. And in the intro, I was talking about this could be my pick for cover of the year. Um, there have been a couple of covers that have come out already in 2021 that are really striking to me that, that visually it just pops. Um, the one that comes to mind is Wonder Woman, black and gold number one, the Warren Lou variant. Uh, this one to me is right up there and having it in person here, looking at the colors, um, just fantastic, amazing. And this one was one that sold out quick. Um, it was shooting up on eBay and just kind of did some extra searching and found this copy available at Comic Traders and went ahead and grabbed it. And while I was there, I noticed that they also had a copy of the Virgin Edition without the trade. So if I'm looking at it and I'm thinking it's cover of the year, um, for me anyway, or has the potential to be, I wanted to get one of these uh, in the Virgin Variant Edition. So this is, I believe, a one in 100. Uh, I wanna take these out of the bag and board and see how they grade out. And I'm really hoping that one of these two black cats, if not both of them, um, get a 9.8 um, because this is one that I would definitely um, put up on the wall here in the comic cape. So let's see how these books graded from comic traders. All right, I've got the order entered here into my master comic book collection spreadsheet. And let's take a look at the ledger stats here for comic traders. And here they are. So I had ordered two books from them uh, previously and ended up uh, both, uh, I think both were 9.6. Um, so there were no 9.8s, um, very straightforward. So we're going to now add an additional five books in here. So I enter online comic book store as the vendor. And just so that I name these consistently. Online CBS is the platform. Uh, let me get rid of the hyperlink. Push that down. And now we should see that I've ordered seven books. And we're going to grade all five here to see um, what the quality is like from comic traders. So let's work. Um, through the first three and save uh, the, uh, the two black cat uh, incentive ratios here. I'm very anxious to, to grade those, but we'll set those aside and start with the others. So we'll take a look at this. Uh, this is X-Men 21. Again, this is the David Nakayama uh, Virgin Exclusive. I'm using those resealable bags and boards. And I want to point out too, uh, like some of the stores, uh, they will often have a buy to get one free listing. And uh, what I ended up doing is getting the, um, the three Nakayama variants uh, using the buy to get one free. So gorgeous cover, love it. Um, and I've heard a lot of people talk about store exclusives and we, we obviously know all about the Walmart uh, pack issue. Uh, what are the, the print runs? And so do we trust these things and, and all of that? Um, and I am all in 100% on buy these if they're cover buys. Don't, don't sweat the, the print run and all the other stuff. So if you love the cover um, and you appreciate the art, then pay the money, buy the store exclusive, and move on, add it to your PC. Okay, so... I'm noticing here the spine looks looks great. 
looks good. I don't really see any issues up and down the spine. What I notice is uh, something along the surface here. So we've got some little blemish there and there as well. So some, some scratching or I don't even know what that is. It's definitely, it, it looks like something got on it and was potentially like scratched with a fingernail or something. So that's gonna be a problem. Uh, and those sort of blemishes, maybe one, take it down a grade, two, couple of grades, and so on. Um, it really looks like it's a, a very, very crisp book otherwise. Corner looks great. Um, nothing really along the edge there. I really don't see anything else on the front. That corner has just an acceptable amount of wear on it. Um, Back looks really great too. Just a hint of some color rub though here and down here too. So that's the tough part is you have a book that's this crispy but uh, some some cover blemishes. Here's something else I noticed right here at the top this edge. Let me slow it down a little bit. Uh, with everything being a solid color, sometimes it's this is missed, but there's just a touch of folding right there. If I move it back into the light right around. It's tough to catch. Hopefully you see it right there. It's tough to catch in focus. There, there you go, right there, right where my thumb is. But right there, there's definitely uh, a bend. Pressable, yes, but with the cover blemish the way that it is, I'm going to give this one a 9.4. Um, there's just enough uh, on the front and then a little bit on the back where um, I just can't, I can't justify this book uh, getting a 9.8. And with the color rub and everything else, it's not going to be a book that unfortunately um, can, be, can be cleaned easily. Uh, I certainly can't. So I'm just going to give it a 9.4. So that's too bad that one got a 9.4. Uh, let's go ahead and get this one entered into the spreadsheet. So this is X-Men 21. Uh, let's look these up quickly if we can and go collect. Uh, these are hard to find just because there are so many X-Men titles. Um, I'll scroll quickly here. Menes, yeah, not... It would have been right here in this group. X-Men 21, let's try this one. Yep. So according to cover price, it has a $30 fair market value. Man, just great road cover. Uh, just unfortunate it was a 9.4. And this order was placed August 13th which is not bad. This arrived, um, say roughly four weeks after placing the order. So not bad again, um, going, uh, from Calgary, Canada to the Western United States. So not bad. All right. So, uh, one last thing, we'll go back to the spreadsheet. It's not in go collect. It is in cover price. My grade is a 9.4, and we'll start to see the numbers on row 5621 down here adjust as we go. All right, I'll put that one aside. And let's start with the next book. Fingers crossed on these, as always, uh, that we get that 9.8. So this is X-Men number one. This is the David Nakayama Green Virgin variant and this one does use a piece of tape all right so looking at the cover just giving it a once over I don't see any color issues any color rubber defects so that's a good sign the spine looks really really crispy that looks good edge top and bottom also look good, doesn't have that issue that um, X-Men uh, 21 had with that little fold, so that's good. 
and also no color rub issue. So kind of unique to that uh, X-Men 21. Uh, this looks like a 9.8 candidate. Usually when I say it's a 9.8 candidate, I either find something or I start sweating. Um, so I'm going to be very careful not to hold the book too long, but looks great. Corner looks pretty good. A little bit of splitting there. I still think it's acceptable. Spine looks good. Not even a hairline spine tick. So this, I'm going to stop holding this book as fast as possible and get it into a full back and new bag. Uh, that corner looks okay as well. Looks fantastic. So this was my second copy. I have one, one with the trade and then uh, one, obviously this one, the Virgin without. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in a full back. And one of my favorite things to do is to take out the full back board and write 9.8. Because that means something good is going in to that bag and board. All right, I will slide these very carefully to the edge of my desk where I can grab them from underneath because I don't want to jam any of the edges with my finger or fingernail unnecessarily. And get this in here. And then just let gravity. And I kind of do this where I'm just letting the bag almost, I grab the bag and I just let the book drop because I hate trying to shove the book into the bag and it accidentally bend a little bit as I'm trying to put it in there. It's better, I find it better just let the book fall. Uh, but just gorgeous. I mean, look at this. I don't know, can I palm it with one hand? Can I do it like that? Hey, look at that. Not bad, huh? A little bit of reflection there, but anyway, I love this in the the, the full back bag and board. So very, very cool. So happy to have this one in a 9.8. So that would look great slapped. And it may might uh, make for a nice bookend. I have um, the previous X-Men number one with Jean Grey on it, also in a 9.8 slab. So that would look kind of cool next to it. All right, so that one lucked out on, and that's my first 9.8 from Comic Traders. Uh, I'm not going to bother looking at that one in Go Collect just because I, they typically just don't have those in there. Cover price will sort in reverse. So when I search X Men number one, you'll see here this is the most recent X Men series. Go Collect works the opposite. Um, somehow in their sorting, they'll go back and show you the very first X Men number one they find sorted by release date, but then somewhere like on in the middle of page three, will be the, the current X-Men uh, July 2021 run. Sometimes it's just too hard to find. Uh, so that's another, uh, I guess, plus for cover price when you're searching for books. So this has 45 variants. Um, I do have the one with trade, and now I have the one without. Again, they're giving it a fair market value of $30. Now do I have to, wait a minute, do I have to go back and get the ones with yellow? Oh man. Probably. <laughs> All right. So let's get this one into cover price. August 13th, 2021. So I definitely appreciate uh, the sorting algorithm and the search on cover price. Go Collect is a little... It's hard to find the books when you're searching for something generic. I understand like X-Men number one, there's a lot, uh, there's several editions of that, um, but still cover price makes it really easy to find. Um, I'm not even gonna bother and waste your time with that. Let's get this into the spreadsheet. Um, not in Go Collect, it is in cover price, 9.8. And now we are one for two. And just so you could see how the ledger stats update, if we go down here to line 32, uh, we'll see we now have a 25% chance uh, of getting a 9.8 because I've graded four and one of them came back uh, 9.8 according to me. Um, so that's how these numbers adjust. And then based, I like to look and see what the cost is per 9.8 versus non just to see, um, you know, how much I'm spending per book to determine, 
you know, is this the right store for me to spend my money at, uh, you know, when it has um, maybe a, a, a small or greater chance of, of getting a 9.8. All right, next one is the Strange Academy number six. And this will round out my Nakayama store exclusive trifecta. Okay. So beautiful red cover, Scarlet Witch. One of the teachers, instructors at Strange Academy. Uh, bottom looks fine. Again, it has a little bit of spine splitting, corner splitting down there, but I would say that's acceptable, although it does go pretty high up right there. That's all split. Hmm. Spine looks really clean otherwise. No real surface wear or surface blemish on the front cover. Just a nice solid red, no fingerprints. Looks really good. Corner has a little bit of softening up there. I would say that also is in the acceptable range, just slightly split, but this split going up the side there, that one I just don't know. I don't know how much I would knock the book for that. Does that bring it to a 9.6 if this is a 9.8 candidate? Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, tiny bit of wrinkling across the the back cover, but it's acceptable for Marvel. Um, there's something, I'm going to turn this book over this way and show you something else I found. So all along the back here, again, tough to get in the light, but you can kind of see it. There's some, some folding up in here along this edge and right in here along this edge. That's pressable. It's definitely pressable. Um, hmm. I think that with the spine split in the corner, I'd have to give it a 9.6. Um, it's really, really great and crisp all around. Um, it would be one of those where I, I'd want to press the back at least and get that smoothed out. And then it's kind of a toss up 9.6, 9.8. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give it the 9.6 with the press indicator just because I think with that there's too many like little subtle dents and wrinkles on the back that would uh, I mean it's not not impact um, and it's not severe so that's why I'm not downgrading it to like a 9.2 I'm going to put wrinkles on back in my greater notes those are free. I don't charge myself for those greater notes, by the way. Those are free. I can look at those anytime, no charge. Okay, so that's been rebagged, boarded, and marked as a 9.6. Now, this one being a little bit of an older exclusive and, and easier to find on Go Collect, I'm going to look up Strange Academy 6 and see what I find. Yeah, this was a popular book. Uh, you could see there's already a large number of sales with fair market value. And this is the trade. The So the Virgin has a fair market value of 170. Trade is uh, roughly half that. And I'm going to find the appropriate bin. All right, let's get this added to the correct bin. PC Marvel Strange Academy. And 9.6. Yeah, that's what we gave it. 13. Comic Traders. All right, Strange Academy. Number six. So it looks like the the Virgin variant has really taken off, whereas the standard trade is, I would say, probably that fifteen dollars is typically what you'd spend for a store exclusive. All right. 
get this entered into cover price. And then we will take a look at the black cat number nine sway variant. Back to the spreadsheet in both systems, 9.6. Okay, uh, going to look at the one in 25 first. Save the one in 100 for last. Now there was some also, also some chatter around this book because there was a one in 25 and then the one in 100 uh, instead of just making the one in 100 or I don't know. Um, for me, the fact of the matter is the cover is great. Uh, and it was one of those that I just had to have uh, because I really felt like as soon as I saw the cover, I'm like, that's got to be one of the, the best covers of the year. So this is the 1 in 25 uh, Sway variant with the trade. Um, spine looks pretty good. Corner, little bit of softening there, whitening, but I would say acceptable. Um, no other edge damage that I can see along the bottom. Bottom corner in the UPC box looks good. Um, there we've got a real problem. So let me let me get this one in here. This is kind of like what I was dealing before with uh, one of the recent copies of Iron Man that I got where it was a scratch that went across. Right there, those two. So that is awful. I don't know if I can get that out because I think it's, I think the cover is scratched and not dented. I mean, I think it's both. So that's unfortunate. Otherwise it looks good. Let me flip it over and look at the back here. A couple of spine ticks right in here, one right there in the red. Let's see, right here in the green. Right there, those two. Yeah. No other issue that I can see. Now, I'm going to open it and see here. Yeah. This is going all through the book. <sighs> really, really disappointing. So it's gone through the first few pages. Like, how many pages does this go through? All the way through. Even that one's subtle. Like, so five pages that dent slash scratch goes through. Um, I feel like even if I were to press this out and get rid of the dent through every page, that you'd still have that scratch across the cover. Oh, look at that. That has got to be like one of the worst feelings. You buy a brand new book, you pay that money, and it comes to you with... A scratch and then what do you do I guess you contact them but and this is the part that I'm always a little bit perplexed by um, stores will typically offer some sort of discount or refund of like 10% I'll give you 10% back or they'll say, you know, if you must return it and you want to pay for shipping. So I'd have to ship this book back to Canada. I'd have to pay for shipping out of my own pocket. Um, I just want the book in as pristine a shape as possible. Um, and this book is clearly not. So really, really disappointed. Black Hat 9, it's probably going to be several of these. Um, there is the Sway variant in here, I think, because it's popular. <sighs> Oh, that's right, I have to figure out what grade I'm going to give it. I don't even want to give it a grade. Um, so again, looking back at history, so we had the Canto graded by CGC with a vertical scratch through the front cover. It was given a 9.0. This has two quarter to half inch scratches right here. You can see them right in there. Um, and it bleeds through five pages. Six if you count the cover. And because... Yeah, I don't know if you can see it there, but because the scratch went through um, right on the cover on the black, it actually color rubbed. 
So we got all kinds of problems with it. Now, if you're looking at this and it's like a Silver Age book, like if this is Hulk 181, you're you're uh, you're taking it all day long. Um, it's still not a 9.8, but still a, a near pristine copy. But brand new book like this, um, kind of beside myself right now. I don't think we want to get into the sevens, and I don't want to punish it as an eight. Um, but I don't feel like I can even give this book a nine. So I'm going to settle in at an eight five. Um, but I'm not even going to mark it as a pressing candidate because I don't think it can be pressed out. It's, it's dented through several pages, um, like specifically impact, uh, specifically impacted through several pages and that impact caused color rub and a scratch on every page, a uh, scratch across the front. So really, really disappointed. I may end up having to take some photos and contact them on that one. 8.5. So the only thing that will uh, make me feel better at this point, I think, is if that the 1 in 100 comes back uh, with no defects such as that. Let me get this one entered first, and we'll take a look. Okay, Black Cat 9. What a bummer. Like when the Strange Academy book, and I give that a 9.6, I'm not, I'm not worked up about it because that's still a very nice high grade. Um, but I mean, look at these prices. 4360, 153 for the 1 in 100. I mean... This book is desirable right now, um, and I just got a bum copy. A very fine plus is what I'm going to grade it as. I don't know. August 13th. It's the purchase date. All right in both systems at an 8.5 okay moment of truth now here we go this is the one in 100 black cat number nine the sway virgin variant so i'm going to look right away and see if i see the scratch and there is no scratch thank goodness um so i'm going to give the whole entire cover a once over um, a little bit of an ink issue or something there. I'm hoping that's just part of the manufacturing and not severe color rub. It looks like it's just part of the manufacturing. A little bit of dust on the front. So far, so good. That corner looks crispy. Spine looks good. That looks good, too. Edge looks good. You see any issues right there, maybe? Yeah, I kind of do too. Another scratch. Right there. Whoosh. So two scratches. Kind of fitting for a black cat book, right? No? Trying to stay positive or... Oh, man. So that's not as bad as the other, um, but it is a scratch. So that's, you know, like when you're talking about color breaking and things like that, scratch, you can't press scratches out. Yeah, and the, you can tell it, it goes right through the back. Uh, let's see if I can find it right in there. And it's hard to see on video, but the scratch goes right through and goes right into the next page as well. Right in there. Um, it does not go through as many pages, uh, really just the front cover and the next page. Front looks great, back looks fine. I, um, actually, there's a huge crease. <laughs> oh man, this is really disappointing. Um, let me get this in the light here so you can see right in here, right there, there is a nice crease, a little zigzaggy crease that goes right in there. Um, that 
possibly could be pressed. Maybe some humidity would get the fibers to relax and kind of undo and unravel. But that scratch, boy, again, this is where, is it any scratch that takes a book to a nine? Or does it depend on the length of the scratch? Because the scratch here is, it's about an inch, three quarters of an inch right in here. Again, nothing all the way up and down the book. My gut is telling me 9-2. So again, not the end of the world. I think it is something I will let them know only because the those two books in particular were not cheap. And for that kind of price, um, again, I would love 9.8, but it, it has to be 9.4 or better. 9.2 um, on the fence. And I am going to put press, even though I, I don't know if I would trust myself to press that one. Um, yeah, on the fence with that one um, being something I would contact them about. Um, a lot of the stores say we only guarantee 9.2 and up. So if I'm saying it's a 9.2, well, then there's nothing to complain about. So it's still a gorgeous book. I still love it. I still love the cover. I'd love to get it slabbed. Um, I'd love to display it somewhere, somehow. Um, it's just a matter of do I, I, you can't find another copy right now. You'd have to pay, um, you know, fair market value on eBay for something like that, which is, it's not something I want to pay. All right. I don't believe that the Virgin was on Go Collect. Let me just double check. It was not. Uh, it was in cover price right here. And I put 9.2. I've just had some bad luck with um, the black cat ratios. I got this great one, the Adam Hughes one, 9.4. Um, 9.2. Oh, what a bummer. What a bummer. Okay, so they've been data entered. Last is the spreadsheet, 9.2. So according to what I came up with, uh, this particular order graded out as an average uh, book grade of 9.3, 20% uh, chance, a 1 in 5, obviously, uh, chance of getting a 9.8. And if we go back to their stats now, uh, Comic Traders, uh, purchased 7 and graded all 7. Um, they've now slipped uh, under 9.4 for an average grade, with still 1 out of those 7 being a 9.8. So what does this mean for me? Um, am I going to buy from Comic Traders again? I think it's going to come down to customer service. So I'm going to contact them. I'm going to take some photos of the two books. Um, it's really unfortunate because as I'm learning how to press and correct books, I don't know how to deal with scratches. Um, I don't know if there's any secret method to getting scratches out of a cover. Um, dents, um, spine repair, things like that, you know, I, I can work on, but um, I can take a tack iron to this scratch and, and see what I can do, but uh, I'm definitely going to take some photos, send it to the store, and just see what they say, see if they respond. Sometimes the stores are responsive, sometimes they ignore you. Let's see if Comic Traders responds. Um, I'll try and post an update if I can to see what they say, uh, but definitely disappointed, and um, I'll be... Um, I, I will definitely reconsider if I find a book like this on Comic Traders um, when I can find this. I can find uh, you know several copies of, of Black Hat on eBay, and then you kind of have to wonder: Do you take the chance and gamble with Comic Traders? Go right to eBay, gamble there. Um, you know, I'll, I'll think about it next time. So I'll let you know what they say. I'll let you know what the customer service experience was like. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely disappointed with those. I still think it's a great cover. I still think it's an awesome book. Um, but, uh, yeah, just disappointed not to get the, the high grade, uh, especially the 9.8. So thank you for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.